Um, hi everyone, uh, I am Javi Zhang and uh, I am a graduate student from UIUC and today I will introduce our work on uh, certifiably robust learning with reasoning via variational inference. And uh, first I will introduce some background on the cellular attack. Um, as we all know, um, currently if we want to classify on some uh, image, we, first we just collect a bunch of images and directly chain it on, with a neural network and we will get the corresponding correct prediction. However, um, we all know that um, this pipeline is quite vulnerable. We can easily get some adversarial noise via gradient backpropagation. And um, once we add this uh, adversarial noise into the image, we can make the uh, neural network misclassify the input image. And there are a lot of works have been made to improve the robustness of deep neural network. Uh, for example, we can pre-process the input. We can use um, generative models to pur purify the input images. However, most of these uh, empirical defenses have been um, adaptive, adaptively attacked again. So we are thinking if we can improve the robustness of a deep neural network in, an in another way. And um, from our, to our knowledge, we guess uh, one main root cause of this vulnerability is that um, um, existing machine learning models lack some uh, logical reasoning abilities. So if we can um, train another knowledge sensor like for um, detecting the shape and uh, we expect it to um, predict well and then we can use uh, additional uh, information like the shape octangle here to correct the misclassifier uh, prediction before. And so and uh, so the thing is that we can train multiple such knowledge sensors and uh, collect all these information and do some reasoning based on this information. And uh, finally, we can make it be, be corrected. So um, in our work, we aim to answer three questions. The first question is that, can we integrate domain knowledge into statistical learning with um, deep neural network to improve their uh, robustness? And the second question is, is that, can we do such integration in an efficient and scalable way. And the third question is that we are wondering how much the certified robust will be improved with such reasoning component. So uh, now let's focus on the first question, uh, how to integrate the domain knowledge. So first we will have a learning component, something like that, take the stop size and example. Um, we will have a main sensor, which serves for the main classification task. For example, the main sensor will be responsible for classifying different uh, type of load size. And the second thing is that we have several knowledge sensors and it will make predictions for individual semantic objects. For example, one uh, we can train one sensor for tracking if it if it is octangle, we can also have we can also train another sensor for tracking if it is, it is triangle. And in practice, some sensors will be attacked and we wanted to recover it. So here comes the next thing. How could we do the reasoning based on all the information we have? An intuitive way is that we, maybe we can just use some probabilistic graph models like a Bayesian mod, uh, network or Markov log, log, logic network to, to uh, combine all this information. And here we will use Markov logic network as an example. First, we can define a bunch of predicates like uh, is stop x, uh, it, it, will, it will return one if the uh, input image, if the sense output, output the stop sign. And we can also define another predicate is octangle x. If the, if the corresponding sense output octangle, it will be one. And if not, it will be zero. And then we can define a weighted formula, which is which you, you can treat it as a composition of um, several predicates. For example, we can define is stop x implies is octangle x. This is just one um, st standard uh, formula. And it will return, it will return three, it will return one if the formula is true. It will return zero if the formula is false. And, and first of all, we are also have a weight for this formula, like the 4.2 here, um, which can represent the confidence of the uh, formula in some sense. And then we are defining a potential function. It will, it is just a simple potential function. It will take one when the formula is true and it will take zero when it is false. So finally, we will get a joint distribution of all the predicates. 
and we can make some make our inference based on this uh, based on the marginal distribution of this function. However, as we know, all know there is one difficulty for this um, function is that um, um, the denominator ZW, it's a partition function here, is intract intractable. So the difficulty is that the inference of a Markov flow chain network is sharply p complete. So here comes another thing is that how could we scale, how could we approximate the distribution here and make the inference more scalable? So it is the second question. How do we do it in an efficient and scalable way? So let's um, do some recap. So main difficulty is system. And another question is that we also need to learn the weight for each formula. So we propose an algorithm with uh, a VR variational EM with GCN. First, we will approximate this joint distribution via standard mean field variational distribution. But the different thing is that um, we hope this approximation family um, contains uh, have, have, have some properties. First, we hope it can consider the confidence output of the main sensor and the knowledge sensors. And the second thing is we also hope it can capture some topology of the knowledge, um, logical, logic or logical relation rules like X implies Y. And the third thing is that um, it should be scalable and it can be optimized efficiently on large scale data sets. So um, we wanted to use GCN to, uh, to, um, to as a family of the approximation functions. So um, take an example, take a simple example. We have two predicates, then we can just con construct two nodes in the graph to represent the corresponding predicates. And if there is some formulas like um, is stop X implies is octangle X, then we will connect an edge in this graph. Um, so for considering the confidence, uh, a naive way is that we can directly use P1, the corresponding confidence of the stop sign and the corresponding confidence for octangle as the input for the graph um, for GCN. However, However, it will it will strongly constrain the expressivity of the model. So instead, we take another way. Is that we will train another um, trainable predicate in bending. For example, we will train one um, additional in bending for the stop for this predicate, and we will also train another predicate in bending for this octangle. Then we will we will use the multiplication of the confidence and the we use some modification of the um, confidence and uh, and the in bending as a GCN as an input of the GCN, and we will as a GCN we output as a corresponding um, variational distribution QT1 and QT2 here. So once we figure out how to design the variational distribution, we can just do the standard variational EN step. We can um, derive the corresponding elbow and uh, optim optimizing in E step to learn the parameters in GCN. And uh, we can rederive the M step for learning the weight of the formula. So overall, we can um, see our pipeline in this figure. We will, you, we will have a learning component. We will collect, uh, uh, we will train multiple analogy sensors and some main sensors, and we will collect all the output. And the second thing is that we will define a reasoning component, reasoning component based on all these sensors, like the, uh, like the defi define the predicate, define the formulas, and the in initialize the weights. Then we will do the variational EN via GCN. We will encode all these predicates in a graph and the lens across bounding variational posterior di distribution. And then, and in the M step, we will learn the corresponding weights of the formulas. And we will do it multiple times until it converges. So here comes the third question. Um, we also certify the robustness of our pipeline be improved when composed with such um, reasoning components. And um, we, we uh, currently, and we will use uh, some metrics to measure our performance. The first is uh, certified uh, um, accuracy. And here is a standard uh, definition of the, of the robustness certification. Um, we will take a classifier edge and uh, take a uh, clean input X and we will want to uh, output an R such that HX equals HX prime for any particular input X prime within some distance for some metrics. And uh, one um, popular certification method is randomized smoothing from Cohen. Uh, it will smooth the uh, uh, base model H um, via um, Gaussian uh, noise. And then 
um, based on the neural person lemma, the smooth classifier G will be robust around X with such radius. And the PA is just a top confidence of the, uh, the confidence of the top, top uh, prediction. And the implication is that um, the certified accuracy we obtain here at some specific uh, radius is just a lower bound of the corresponding empirical robustness accuracy. <laughs> And so certified accuracy, we will only put the certified accuracy for um, our um, experiment. And here is one experiment on one data set called AWA2. And it's, it's a standard image data set which contains 50 animal classes and 85 attributes. And uh, based on this data set, we can stress about, about 200 predicates. We can stress about 50, 50 uh, hundreds. Uh, formulas and the and the final result shows that our method could improve uh certified robustness about twenty two um thirty percent, well, which means the knowledge will help a lot. And similarly, we also test our method on other data like World fifty for classifying the words. And in this data set, there are fifty uh, words, and each word will contain five characters. And we also construct a, a, a lot of predicates and formulas based on these formulas. Uh, based on this data set, and still we can get about uh, 50 or um, 19% in, uh, improvement on this data set. Um, for, showing, for better showing our um, method, it's the effective of our method, we also test on some other standard uh, image data set like GTSRB or PDF uh, malware, and all these results show that um, um, with additional knowledge, we can improve the certified robots a lot. Um, when compared to the baselines. So uh, one interesting operation study is that um, if uh, more sensors means more robustness, and the answer is yes, um, we, we, we conduct one uh, additional operation study is that um, we, we are constrained the model with um, K knowledge sensors. And so the results show that with more sensors, the certified robust will be consistently improved. And this is the difference with uh, ensemble method. Since for ensemble methods, like I show here, if uh, even if you increase the number of the base models from three to 30, the um, certified accuracy of the ensemble will only increase about 1%. So, um, so this is just a difference um, between our method and the ensemble method. There is a clear bot bottleneck for the ensemble method. So um, let's um, conclude our contribution. We propose a scalable and certifiable robust learning with the reasoning pipeline. And um, we redirect the elbow, we derive the EM step, and we will approximate the inference via valuational inference using GCN. And uh, we show that uh, with additional knowledge, we can, significant, we can obtain significantly higher certified robustness. And we also can conduct a, a, a site of evolution studies to show like the difference between our method and ensemble. But, uh, but, but of course, there are some constraints in our methods. Like um, first, we need to train many knowledge sensors. And another constraint is that um, we, we must have the annotation of the knowledge. So um, as for the future work, uh, uh, so, so one question is that could we make this more general? So here is our future work. The main, the main bottleneck is happen is happened on the learning part. We need to train a lot of sensors and we need annotation. But um, an interesting way to, to think is that uh, could we replace this section with, uh, with vision and uh, LRN? If, if we can, then we do not need any annotation and we do not need to train any sensors. We just ask, ask different questions to the LRN and, get the and collect the corresponding answers and still do the um, reasoning component as I show here. In this way, our, our method will be more general. And this is what I am doing now. Yeah, thanks for listening.